Hey there, it's Sunday morning and I just released the video on, well, video number three, part three on the bandsaw build where I showed making the quick release tensioner and also adding a little bit of strength to the upper part of the frame. If it wasn't clear in that video what was going on, is the post is not twisting, nothing else here is twisting except this part on the front here. And the reason why that's an issue is the blade guide that comes down. So as you tension the blade, it's going to try to pull the blade guide back. And that will depend upon <laughs> how far down it is. So Really, like ideally, you don't want this thing twisting at all. But in, in, like in practical terms, that's almost impossible to do. The only thing you can do is try to minimize it. So I added that piece on the inside here. And I also added this piece of um, oak, half inch thick, that goes right across to the other side of the uh, beam over here, the box beam, and that added a lot of strength. Like I said in the video, that like all this stuff being cut out here takes a lot of the strength away from this panel. And also the strength axis of the plywood is, is actually going the wrong way, right? It should be, ideally, once again, it should be going this way when in fact it's going this way. For Baltic birch, it doesn't matter that much, but it makes a difference. So adding those two parts uh, really stiffened it up and made the problem so that it's no longer really a problem. Okay, so what else? The table and the trunnion, hang on, let's reach back here, loosen it up a little bit so you can see that it tilts up 45 degrees and it tilts back down and you're good. And also insert. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do <clears throat> also is cut this area out right here and rabbit it in about an eighth of an inch and put an aluminum insert right in here. So it's thinner, first of all, right? Because when you tilt the blade, you're going to, like if the blade's going to come out roughly in the same spot on the top, but it's going to be cutting through all this part right here. So I would have to tilt the thing and slide it in, cut that out. It's not a big deal, but then it doesn't leave, like it doesn't leave a lot of strength for the wood there on that cutout. Whereas if it's aluminum, and then that should be good for a very long time, okay? And, and I mean, the benefit of this is that you don't need to take the table off or try to wiggle the, the uh, blade through a slot. Uh, and also, you can get at the lower blade guide without, you know, messing around. So it slides in, slides out. Uh, at this point, I don't think it needs anything to lock it in place but we'll see after I've been using it. It's not that big a deal to add something to lock it in place, even just a screw, you know, from the top. Small number six screw right here, and that'll lock the insert in place, and you take it out when you need to change the blade or readjust the lower blade guide. I didn't make a video for this channel last week because, well, I don't know. I didn't consider what I put out last week an actual video. It was that uh, thing on the powering another tool from the uh, table saw blade. And uh, that was something that I had. I had that idea that like kind of popped into my head years ago. And then it was only recently that I just cobbled together that thing that I used in the video to quickly demonstrate how it works. And I did that months ago with the idea that I would use that as a starting point and then build the machine from there. And the entire, <laughs> the entire purpose or idea behind the machine was just for novelty sake, just doing it to see how many views it would get. But then I got to thinking, well, I mean, in the months since I made the thing, that is it really worth, you know, putting that much time and effort into something that, <sighs> you know, in the end may not do that well. And that in the end, I probably wouldn't end up using at all because it's not really that efficient to do that, as I said in the description of the video. So 
Instead of doing that, instead of building the machine, I said, why don't you just take that footage that you had there quickly using that you know, quick mock-up and put that in a very quick video and, and pose it as a question to the viewership and see what they've got to say. And not unexpected, the viewership said basically the same thing over and over again. I think the video has more than 700 comments. I didn't read them all. I just kind of skimmed through, I don't know, maybe half of them as they were coming in. And, uh, but they basically said the same thing. Well, no, it's dangerous. Why don't you take the blade off and put a disc on or put a pulley on or something like that? Completely missing, <laughs> completely missing the idea altogether. The idea is to use the table saw as it is without changing anything. And then you throw this thing on and you start using it, right? With the blade wheeled up to the right height. So, yeah, that was what that was about. I really didn't have, well, I, you could say that months ago I had the idea that I would make an actual machine, but no real practical purpose for it other than looking for views on YouTube. You know, that sensational video. Okay, so I may still do it. I may get, you know, bored one day and quickly make something up. Okay like an edge sander with the belt. I think it has enough power for that. Or possibly a like a drum sander, like a spindle sander that doesn't oscillate. Although making it oscillate would probably be make it more interesting, right? Cuz I could I could Okay, you've got the wheel that goes against the blade. That drives the drum, you could say. All right, and then you could drive another wheel off of that wheel that would reduce the, it would have to be substantially bigger though. And I mean, the idea with this is that the wheel that goes against the blade would have to be pretty big to begin with. So I don't know, it'd have to be, there'd have to be another, possibly another wheel underneath. So a smaller one. So you got two, a stack of two wheels. Right? Or maybe on the bottom is the big wheel. <laughs> I'm thinking this through as I'm going here. Bottom would be the big wheel, above that would be a smaller wheel, and then a larger wheel that would reduce the RPM would go up against that wheel and, and drive the mechanism that makes the thing go up and down. All right, so I'd have to draw that up and put a lot of time into, you know, working that out. And then, you know, that's a lot of time put into something that Basically, I wouldn't be using that. I would only be like making for the novelty of it. But I don't know. Sometimes these things work out if you um, make it attractive enough. I mean, all you got to do is look around and, and this applies to everything. I mean, even mundane projects. I saw I like I was I was looking for something the other day and I happened to go to the home page and I saw a, a thumbnail for a video and and I actually watched the video from the, by hovering over the thing it starts playing the video so I could see what it was but it was basically like the thumbnail was uh, one of these scissors car jacks you know the cheap one you get with every you know compact car well I guess with everything these days I don't know like I haven't bought anything new in a long time but <laughs> it was a scissors jack with a wheel on the front, like this plain, thick uh, wooden wheel. And when you're looking at the thumbnail, it almost looks like a stool, like on a side type thing. But then the, th the title said some nonsense about crazy idea about whatever. So this video had like 13 million views. I couldn't believe how many views this video had. And basically what it was, it was a router table. <laughs> That's been built, I don't know, dozens of times the same type of idea on YouTube to build the lift mechanism with one of these scissors jacks, right? Except he got the right thumbnail and he got the right title to get all the looky-loos crowding in and seeing what the heck that is. Is that a stool? So like I said in that video, this was video number three. It'll be one more covering the upper blade guide and the lower blade guide and the cover. And then I also need to make a handle for the tension knob, just a wheel, like a plywood wheel that the bolt fits into and then stays in there. 
right? Because I have had zero problem with tracking on this saw. I can change uh, from a quarter inch to the half inch blade, adjust nothing. Don't adjust the tension, don't adjust the tracking or anything, and it tracks perfectly fine. Um, now, that, that's probably a product of the blade length being identical. Okay, so if you have a blade that's slightly longer, which happens, then you'll have some adjustment to do, but yeah, I've had no problem. Now, I haven't done a lot of cutting. The only cutting I did was that piece of ash that I did, but I expect it'll remain the same. Also, what was I gonna say? Um, one problem I did have was I crowned these wheels with this bit right here. This is a laminate trimming bit and it's slightly angled. Like the cutter is on, I don't know, maybe a, a two degree angle here, maybe three. It's not much. And I crowned the wheel, like I said, and it did make it, it did make it good. I had a problem with these tires though, in that the outside edge of them is actually thicker than the middle. So when I put the wheel on, it was, it was pretty much flat in the middle. So the thickness of the tire on the edge being thicker and thinner in the middle kind of canceled the crown. So what I wound up doing was adding a strip of um, melamine tape to the center to build out the wheel enough so that it uh, restores that crown, okay? And this stuff is like a 30 seconds of an inch thick. It's the stuff you put on, it's that white iron-on tape that you put on melamine uh, panels when you're building something, you know, some cheap furniture or something, right? So I had some of that, I split it down to a quarter inch wide and I ironed it on. I didn't iron it on, I used a heat gun and got it to stick. And yeah, tracks perfectly with that on there. Beautifully. Now, okay, with all that said, I haven't, like I said, used the saw much, but that's a good sign when it's working this well to begin with, okay? No messing around, right? The other thing, and I thought I would get more, well, the, you know, the day is young. I thought I would get more comments about the wooden spring, how durable that will be, and I don't see a problem with that if you're um, fairly diligent about releasing the tension. Okay, <clears throat> and that's, I mean, that's the, that's the benefit of a quick release tensioner is that you can release the tension quickly. And there's no reason not to, because when you release the tension, like it doesn't mess anything up. I've tried this several times. You release the tension, when, you go, when you're going to use the saw again, you'll see that this is here. So you're not going to start the saw because you'll see that that's there. Maybe painting that red or bright orange like this would make it more visible, more of a, you know, a visual sign. But you swing that up and you tension the blade. There's no blade on here now, but you get the idea. I also need to add a catch on the back here to keep this up here. Something simple, just a push button thing. And once it goes up, it clicks and locks, and then you push it back down and it comes down. Okay. Well, the other thing I want to talk about, okay, the spring on the back here, half inch, the piece I added on. This piece up here is half inch, and that makes the lever half inch, and like I said, this additional spring half inch, and this a half inch. If I had my time back, I would have made this three quarters of an inch up here, everything else three quarters of an inch. This piece down here would be way stronger, obviously, with the extra thickness. Also, the spring would be stiffer. Because even with that added on, I think I could have left this part not cut out, to be honest. And I'm going to try, like I said, I'll, I'll be using the saw, I'll be t like testing it. And eventually what I could do, if, if it needs it, is take this piece off again and put a full length piece on here. And even like I said in the previous video on this channel, I could replace it with uh, solid wood if it's not stiff enough. But right now, I'm not having any problems. This is putting on um, plenty of tension for the quarter inch blade and the half inch blade. 